listening to Nightmare on Film Street. The current time is 666. Traffic is clear ahead from here to the afterlife. But it's hell outside. For the next hour, you're on Nightmare Time. So, let's give a grave welcome to our hosts, John and Kim. Hello again, fiends, and welcome to Nightmare on Film Street, horror for the casually obsessed. I'm John. I'm Kim. And we are here today to close out our Tans of Terror double feature with James Wong's Final Destination 3. I am so excited for this episode. It has been such a long time coming. Yeah, uh, Kim, as the the self-proclaimed internet's foremost expert on Final Destination 3 gonna have to ask you what are what are three good things about this movie oh. three if for anybody out there that hasn't seen this movie yet and is trying to figure out whether or not to watch it before listening to the rest of this episode what are what are three reasons that they might love it um one it's a final destination film so that means creative fucking kills Every 20 minutes, every 10 minutes, there is a a teenager getting it, or an adult, actually. This Final Destination films do not discriminate. That's true. You could be a teacher, you could be an adult, you could be a police officer, but if you were supposed to die on that first opening sequence, you're going to get it. Uh, You could die like this, or you could die like that, (laughs) or you you could could die die like like us. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Point two. Extended roller coaster horror sequence. Yeah, that's good. Uh, You cannot beat amusement parks, carnivals, that so perfectly do they fit in horror films, and they are not featured often enough. For the longest time, I wanted to pair uh, this movie with the House on Haunted Hill remake. Hell yeah. Because they are the two greatest spotlights of a roller coaster in a horror film. And honestly, we need more roller coaster horror. I don't know what else we could yes, do. Yes, please. Haunted roller coaster, maybe. You know, like my my grandma died on this roller coaster a hundred <laughs> years ago to that. <laughs> I keep I keep trying to visit her, but somebody <laughs> always takes the seat beside me. <laughs> if you say her name three times when you're going down the big hill, some says she'll sit next to you. <laughs> oh boy. Um, point three. Well, I got to give it up to the title of the double feature. It's got one of the best, maybe the only. Um, yeah, it's got it's got one of the best roller coaster sequences in horror. <laughs> it's got one of the best tanning bed sequences in uh, horror. I, I'm going to say it's one of the best kills in the Final Destination franchise. I'm with you. The tanning bed death, which just simply needs to be seen for you to understand how amazing it is and fucking dark and twisted and i want to say almost sadistic because of the music choices and the <laughs> the theming around it it's just a fucking wild ride it's so yeah that's my point 3 is the tanning beth kill <laughs> Yeah, those are those are those are three great reasons. Three good reasons why we think you should check out Final Destination Three. Don't worry, we got more for you in the rest of this episode. But before we get into it, John, what is keeping you creepy this week? Everything, everywhere, all at once is coming out this week. Not really a horror movie, but man, am I stoked to see this fucking movie! Everybody's talking about it, and I, I just can't wait. I just want to see it. <laughs> uh, there's there's gonna be at least one spooky sequence, I'm sure. But like fucking martial arts and shit. Jamie Lee Curtis is like an IRS shithead. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but like the biggest thing keeping me creepy this week has has got to be Panic Fest. Uh, they they recently made their first wave announcement. They've got over thirty feature films, fifty shorts, and we're gonna be there. We're in that announcement. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be in Kansas City, Missouri, for Panic Fest this year. We're doing a live podcast recording with Mick Garris to celebrate the thirtieth anniversary of Sleepwalkers. Uh, I can't fucking wait. It's going to be a blast. Panic Fest is happening April 28th into May. Go to panicfilmfest.com to check out all the movies and events coming. Joe Bob's going to be there. They're doing a live last drive-in for Bubba Hotep. Can't wait. That's going to be an absolute blast. We didn't talk about this last week, right? I don't think so. It feels very familiar. (laughs) Either way, it's still important. We're still going to be there. Hell yeah. They're also doing virtual if you are not in the area and can't come see us. And there's more info there at panicfilmfest.com. But yeah, please come. Hang out. Have beers with us. Hoot and holler at some indie horror movies. It's going to be great. 
And just a quick shout out to Scream on Blu-ray. It just landed the new Scream movie. We are giving away five different copies. Thanks to Paramount Pictures. They gave us a whole bunch. The giveaway is everywhere. It's on Twitter. It's on our Discord server, our Instagram page, and Facebook. So just find Nightmare on Film Street in those spots and... Uh, enter the giveaway and you might walk away with a brand new Scream Blu-ray. Yeah, that's pretty badass. Yeah. That'd be rad. I can't win. I know. (laughs) We are not going to own Scream on Blu-ray, but we're giving them away. (laughs) Uh, Lastly, of course, we are putting out the first episode of the Never Sleep Again series. We talked about it last week. Uh, nine Nine movies, nine podcasts, zero sleep. We watched the entire Nightmare on Elm Street franchise in one sitting. It nearly killed us. And the first episode is coming out in the Fiend Club tomorrow. You can listen to that episode and all of the other bonus episodes at nofspodcast.com slash fiend club. Uh, it's the easiest way to support the show and to get some, honestly, truly, some of the best episodes we've ever recorded. <laughs> the hardest thing, I think, of that whole thing wasn't just staying awake. It was differentiating between Nightmare on Elm Street and Nightmare on Film Street. Because we say Nightmare on Film Street so often that adding the uh and adding the elm, it, my brain just, ca- nope, that's not in there anymore. Not happening. <laughs> But yeah, here are our thoughts on our, our very clear caffeine-addled thoughts <laughs> on Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street. It's so funny to listen to that first episode because it's just like, wow, these are different people than what I remember when we were talking about Jason versus Freddy or Freddy versus Jason. Like, we we become monsters <laughs> at some point. <laughs> the, we block out all the fucking windows in the apartment. <laughs> just say, like, we had no sense of time anymore. We made it from one McDonald's breakfast hour to the opening of another McDonald's oh, breakfast boy. hour. <laughs> yeah, that was it was great. Fueled by OJ. <laughs> My sleep schedule is finally back on track, though, so um, I have no regrets anymore. <laughs> but enough news from us. Let's get into this week's episode where we talk about Final Destination 3. It was an accident. There it is. They barely escaped. God, the drives are broken. Don't push the button. Once we got off that roller coaster, we're still going to die. It's become a destination. You read into this like them urban legends. They can't avoid. I never thought I could see my own death before it happened. You are dead! Final Destination 3. Meet you at the end. Rated R. It starts Friday, February 10th. Final Destination 3 from 2006 is currently sitting at a 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb. 44% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 2.9 out of 5 on Letterboxd. It's also directed by James Wong, who is the director of the original Final Destination. But it's not written by Jeffrey Riddick, who wrote the first two. No, but it is also written by Glenn Morgan, who also wrote the first two. (laughs) (laughs) And is the director of Black Christmas. He's the best friend in Trick or Treat. This guy has had... Oh, like Black More, Xmas. Black Xmas, yeah. 2006, Black Xmas with Mary Elizabeth Weinstein. She's in that. Bam. Oh, uh, my God. We connected it. I think it's criminal that this only has a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes. We should change that to the name of the podcast. Every single movie we do, we're like, this is a crime. <laughs> <laughs> it's bullshit that no one likes this movie. <laughs> we're just obsessed with an era of horror movies that other people just don't revisit. Yeah, it's like our favorite horror movies are the bugs on the bottom of a rotten log. We're Timon and Pumbaa <laughs> eating yeah, those fucking bugs. Eating them up, slurping them up. <laughs> There's and it's not like mm, we're grubs from 1999 to 2008. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not contrarian. We're just just give me those just those dirty gross bugs. I just want them. I you know why though? It's just because it's the era we grew up with. Oh, what an era it was. And this is such Final Destination 3 is such a time capsule that I... In more ways than it thought it would be. Oh, my. Well, first of all, the digital camera. How long has it been since you've seen somebody using a digital camera in public? Yeah. (laughs) Well, how long has it been since you've needed one? Like, it was three years after this movie. Everybody was like, all right, well, fuck digital cameras. We don't need this bullshit. It's either you go pro or you've got an iPhone pro. Characters say iPod in this, and you're like, wow. There were iPods. And it was like a big statement. Like, oh my God, you got iPod money? Yeah, and somebody said PSP. (laughs) They were dropping all that technology. Yeah, bury me with my PSP. R.I.P. PSP. It does not exist anymore. The premonition in the beginning of this movie is wild. This is 
maybe one of the fuck it. I'm gonna say it. This is the best premonition in all of the Final Destination movies. Yep, you it's heard Cam. Good. This is her personal favorite. It's as good as Flight 180. What's your favorite premonition? Flight 180. Oh, okay. A hundred percent, especially uh, in how it's laid out. Oh yeah, no, it's fucking, it's fucking great. But uh, roller coaster, fuck yes. Agreed. So, and, and hey, there's an argument to be made for the second one because it's not like you are scared to go on roller coasters because of Final Destination, but you sure as shit won't let me drive behind a truck that's got a bunch of logs on it. Everybody in the world won't drive behind a truck with logs on it. Yeah, hey, you're all irrational. Like, <laughs> none of you have driver's licenses. I'm sure of it. You're all passengers. It's like, who fucking cares? They strapped them down. There's nothing to be scared of. I don't even like when we drive near those trucks that cart new cars, you know, where there's like six new cars all stacked. Stacked on top of each other. Oh, it's because you saw Bad Boys 2 and you're terrified of it, of somebody hijacking it and just dropping them off, right? Does does that happen in Bad Boys 2? Oh, fuck yeah, it happens, man. It's like one of the greatest Michael Bay sequences ever. Bad Boys 2, unofficial Final Destination 2 spinoff. I like it. I I think all of these movies are brilliant in the sense that your cold open begins immediately and like you get all the goods up top. It's like you get free kills throughout the whole movie. Every single one of these franchises. Like we're going to kill everybody for you and then we're going to roll the tape back a little bit. That is the most ingenious setup for a modern day because this is essentially a slasher. It's got the same kind of formula. You have your, your character archetypes. Each film presents a new round of them essentially. And you, you're cold open instead of that scream kill where it's like a disposable character, which is still fucking amazing and a classic. Classics will never die. This kills all your characters. This is like wham, pow, punch. Oh, uh, sit down. You're strapping in because we're going to kill them all over again. Now. Yeah, we're going to kill them again. So good. So, so good. Uh, there's, there's also just something great about watching it and knowing that something's amiss. It's absolutely brilliant in in the first one. And I think partly it's because, you know, he's scared of flying and stuff. Even by the time you get to the second one, it's it's loaded with the you you've seen this movie before. You know what you're well, you know what's gonna happen, so let's just let's now you're guessing what the catastrophe is gonna be. Um that's that's always a lot of fun. I think Final Destination three though, one small thing that I don't like about the cold open is what? is when Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Wendy, her character, comes out of her premonition. And she's like, oh my God, uh, oh, I'm still alive. Oh, thank God. And then she's looking around to see if, she's looking around and she sees the patterns. Of the like, gum. Oh, that happened. Yeah, you touched gum before. We're all gonna die. Like, what are you it- talking about? That's an exact callback to the first film when Devin Sawa pulls the tab on his yeah. collapsing table. There's more and the than tab just- breaks and he's like, oh, fuck. But there's more than just that. There's there's people having conversations with him. Like people are repeating dialogue. Like there's more than just- We're in part the- three, baby. We're being <laughs> all efficient. we need is a piece of gum. <laughs> We're being efficient. Okay, Let's let's get it. Also, I would say that Wendy is more of a high strung person. She I think she's more tightly wound. I think she came into Final Destination with some bags packed already. I think she's more of an anxious person, and that's why there's all of the themes of, like, control in this. That's why she's always behind the camera. She has to observe everything from afar. She can't be part of it because she just mm, can't control the situation, but I can control everything from behind my little focal lens here. (laughs) Snap, 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 yearbook. (laughs) I do like the addition of the camera. I think they take some, these characters take some major leaps as to. Yeah. So, first of all, the first photo that sets her off is her boyfriend doing the devil pose in front of the coolest entrance to a roller yeah. coaster ever. And with a giant devil. Like, he's also, he, he's just mimicking the devil pose. Like, what is sinister about well, that? I still don't. So there's a roller coaster, like, zinging by in the background. Ooh. And she's like, oh, dear God. It was a premonition that he would die on the roller coaster. <laughs> and you're taking a photo of a roller coaster? It's just like, come on, lady. I don't know. The, but- ne- the next one is the best. Like, the two girls who die in the tanning bed. Their their photo is, like, a little overexposed and they look orange. It's on fire. <laughs> How are you supposed to know they're going to die in a tanning bed because from that? Because they invited her tanning. She knew where they were and she associated. But yeah, the photos alone. She, she looked at those two photos and was like, like, 
dear God. <laughs> it does not make sense. Like all of the leaps that they make for the photos being the premonition, being a further premonition uh, or calling card for everybody's death. Nonsense. Loved it. Genuine <laughs> nonsense. Loved it. <laughs> it's great. It's so much fun. And it's, but it's also sort of tongue in cheek in the sense like, hey, you know why we're here. You know what this movie is. Like who fucking cares if it's held together by a thread? You're going to love it anyway, man. That's what's so great about the Final Destination movies. I have the belief that it's maybe one of the most consistent franchises ever because oh, yeah. it set a bar that is unpassable by another franchise because the story doesn't have to be original. Like some of the complaints of this one I, I read were that it's very formulaic and that's the point. That's the whole fucking point is death has a formula and people aren't seeing Final Destination for an original story. They want to see an original premonition opening and then they just want to they want the experience of those drawn out tense. How are they going to kill this character? Because yep. those are fucking fun to watch in a theater with a bunch of horror fans. Yeah. It makes you, like the first time you're seeing it, you have no idea how they're going to die. Exactly. It makes for such a fun movie theater experience because you're watching it with everybody and everybody's doing the exact same thing like, they're like oh, oh, oh <laughs> is that gonna spill water is this glass gonna break is that wire gonna short everybody's playing nancy drew like horror fan nancy drew watching and you, you get to do it like six times in the movie yeah you don't need any plot you just need one after another of these really fun sequences and final destination can really play in the death sphere like each character gets 10 minutes to die yeah. which is unheard of in another franchise especially well modern at least yeah like you do not get the the set pieces for murders in in modern horror movies the way you get them in a final destination movie i really hope that sixth movie finally comes out i don't even know if that's the people who are attached to direct it are still attached to direct it like i think I, I, it's still in pre-production but like god damn i need another final destination movie i'm so surprised they haven't just gone the saw route with it and just released one every year that'd be remember what, like Saw was coming out every Halloween. Hell yeah. Final Destination is, I don't want to say just as disposable, but in the same sense, throw them on the subway, throw them in a boat, throw them like... <laughs> Doesn't matter. Does not matter whatsoever. You could do crossovers. You could do Final Destination crossovers. Oh, you know what? You know what's great? This might be the one franchise. Now, I know we're only like, what, 20 years... 22 years into this franchise so it probably That's crazy. wouldn't I know it's not if I could get, like I'm like oh I came out in like 1999 that was like six years ago <laughs> <laughs> I have some bad news <laughs> uh, it's probably not old enough to necessarily qualify for this but maybe legacy sequel free unless oh, oh they're totally no, gonna bring could. Devin Sawa back they can't he's dead they actually could do this now that I'm thinking about it. Devin Sawa dies, but Ali Larder makes it through the first movie. She's in the sequel. Oh. But let's let's not forget legacy sequels are huge about just retconning everything but the first movie. So we could technically have a legacy sequel with Ali Larder coming back. True. She's a teacher at a high school. She'll probably maybe die in the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> but damn. Uh, I need unless uh, I need Final more Destination movies. gets into like time traveling business. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's this 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 franchise honestly should get weird. Like people literally talk to death at the Grim Reaper. This should get fucking wild. I just want to side note: Tony Todd is so fucking fantastic in this franchise, and he has to do so little. He just has to come with his gravelly voice and his mischievous little smile. In Final Destination 3, he doesn't even have to do that. He's the voice of the fucking devil. Right? Oh, oh my God. So good. <laughs> if I was in an amusement park and I heard Tony Todd's voice coming out of a like 18-foot devil, there's no way I wouldn't go on that roller coaster 666 times. <laughs> like, I would just Precisely all day. Precisely that amount. Yes, of course. Yeah, I actually looked it up while we were watching because- It's in Vancouver. I know. We gotta go. <laughs> I was there, yeah. It's called the corkscrew. I'm finding it. We're going on that roller coaster for sure. Oh my. I'm gonna do the devil pose in front of it, just like that kid from Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Maybe I'll buy a digital camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, let's go real 2003 on it. Wait, 2006. <laughs> oh boy. Speaking of 2006, I just want to give shout outs to all of the little baby winehouse bumps. Oh my God. <laughs> hair bumps in this. I didn't like them in 2006. I really don't like them I now. I feel so bad because like I definitely watched this movie and was like, oh, the hair is so fucking trendy. I'm going to bump my hair. I remember bump. doing like the bang bump and then like the hair bump into did you the ever, ponytail. Did you ever buy the piece that you'd put? I did not. Okay, good. I used to see infomercials for those. Like, give yourself bump an it. extra big bump. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. 
Oh, the bump. It's basically just like, here's a tiny little hat. Tuck it under your hair. <laughs> no one will know. The fucking hat game in this, too. It, it's not oh even. Oh, my God. It's the hat out, game. It was outdated for 2006. Like, her sister's got, like, a full-on Jamiroquai hat. It's like a fucking beret. Yeah, it's it's like a, like a Macy Gray style thing. Oh. It's it was not in fashion in 2006. And then was it Stevie Cheeks? What's that guy's name? <laughs> Frankie Cheeks. Frankie Cheeks, who everybody insists on saying his full name. Everybody, who, no one Even says after Frankie. He dies. Yeah, in like a oh my fashion. god, we're here today to remember the life of Frankie Cheeks. <laughs> Franklin Cheeks. Taken. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, they gave his Christian name for the for the funeral. Like taken too soon off this earth what if his actual last name was cheeks it has to be it's in the it's in imdb <laughs> as frankie cheeks i love he also talks about himself in the third person like man if i wasn't if frankie cheeks wasn't such a womanizer these girls would still be alive You're like buddy <laughs> like, i don't i don't i don't think it was just about you Oh, uh, poor Frankie Cheeks. The thing about his death, though. Uh huh. Did you? Sorry. Did you have any other? No, no, no. no. I was hoping that we would get that we would talk a little more about him. I got something to say. Okay, his death, I think, is one of the most underrated in the franchise. Yeah. I, I think it's one the one of the best ones. It looks great. It's also huge surprise when it comes. Yes, and the fact that it's in a fast food lineup, and you're just like, oh yeah, you are fucking stuck there, and it's something that everybody does. Everybody's in that. Like Everybody gets sandwiched in by a delivery truck. At the bottom of a hill <laughs> with a I, runaway truck nearby. I could not remember where this movie was set. And during this scene, I was like, fuck, are we in San Francisco? Because of all like the hilly hills. And then the, the runaway truck happened. I'm like, oh, this explains what's going on. This is why we're here. So yeah, delivery truck has sandwiched them in. There's a de- there's another second delivery truck up on the hill, like a moving truck that's barreling toward them. Nobody's in it. The brake is off. Uh, they get out of the car just in time, but like the impact drives the the engine of their truck out through to the car in front of them, which turns out to be Frankie Cheeks, and the the fan belt just chops up the back of his fucking head. Yeah, and there's blood matter and shit everywhere. It's great. These deaths are hard to explain. But, but what's so cool about it for a Final Destination film is that this isn't considered a skip. Death wasn't actually after Wendy and Kevin. Mm-hmm. But their presence affected the murder. And you'll find that with all of the murders because they're present at all of them. They actually kick off a lot of those domino effect death is blowing over a bag of salts. and Yeah, like, which they never seem to recognize. Like yeah. they, they see every other pattern possible except for the fact that like, oh wait, us being here changes things. Yeah, like when we get to the Tanning Beth kill. Ooh, wait, is that the only one that's unaffected by it? No, she calls. Wendy calls them uh-huh. and them reaching to get their phone knocks the shelf down. Oh, which pins them shit. into the Yeah, so she even affects like every time every person she tries to save she's still in the pattern. Like she's wow. still following Death's design. So Death's design could very well include the skips in order to get them all at the spoiler subway station at the very end. Yeah. Like she's never Never actually falling out of line. He's playing 4D chess. Yeah, it's like de- maybe Death's just been doing this so long. He wants a little bit of fun, so he's giving like a, a small pocket of people uh- who are supposed <laughs> to die in sequence awareness <laughs> that they think that they're outside of the pattern, but they're not. I and lo- then you really have no control at all. I love- you just have the illusion of control. I love that Death is just like. You know, it's it's Friday afternoon, and he's just bored, and he's like, "Fuck it, let's just let's just let's get wild." Well, with I mean, it. isn't that what God did with Earth? <laughs> he was just like, "I want some little men." Yeah, on Friday he made all the nightclubs, <laughs> <laughs> and on the eighth day there was the triple X day. whiskey. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's crazy that nobody tries to accuse uh, Wendy and Kevin especially Wendy, of being the catalyst for people's deaths. Yeah, because at one point, they offhand are like, oh, I was questioned by those police for 10 hours. Yeah. You're like, yeah, because you were present at all of these gruesome, all gruesome of these deaths. accidents. They can't they can't make that a storyline, though, because we already saw it in the first one. True. It makes a lot more sense in the first one because they think it's more of a terrorist attack, which, uh, you know, that's the only movie where they specifically said, we think this might be a terrorist attack and this kid did it. And it might be because it's the only one that came out before 9-11, but holy shit, did this movie drop a fucking 9-11 bomb in the middle of it. They're trying to, she's trying to convince Kevin that death is after them and that there are premonitions that you can find in photographs. She pulls out the Flight 180 
a catastrophe. Uh, she pulls out something else, I think, from the second it's movie. Benjamin with Benjamin Franklin, she pulls oh, out. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. It's Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. Here's a photo somebody took of Abraham Lincoln. And there's a slash to the photo right where he got shot. Uh, and then there's a photograph of the Twin Towers with the shadow of an airplane on it. And she's like, see? <laughs> like, and we're all like, too soon. You're like, wow, <laughs> still too soon. In 2022, it's still too soon. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I love that Ian McKinley, who's got the same name as his high school. How lame. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. I, I love the idea that he might be trying to hunt her and kill her. They really, they just tease that idea. They don't go full hog with it. No. no. Like, at one point, he's definitely made, or somebody is is following her in a van, and then he shows up at the end. She thinks that he's there to kill her. He's obviously not, because he's he's surprised by that. Even he's like, "Ooh, that's an idea. Like, <laughs> that's that's interesting. Uh, let me let me let me think about that for a little bit." But the, yeah, just the, the the sense that there could be somebody. Like, you don't have to worry about just death. You have to worry about a guy who is now trying to kill you in order to like save the rest of the group. That's great. That's an awesome little cat and mouse thing that. Doesn't actually happen in the movie, but would be great. Could still be used in a future installment. To be honest, it might already it, be in yeah, a future it's true. installment. It feels it's true. Feels like it's from uh, another one. There's always one bad seed in in the bunch. There's always somebody yeah. that cannot handle uh, their girlfriend being murdered, and therefore yeah. goes on like a toxic masculine rage. <laughs> We've drifted a little further away from from Frankie Cheeks uh, because the the thing that I really want to talk about is uh, his involvement. In everybody's death on the roller coaster. Oh. Let's not forget, he sneaks into the roller coaster behind the two girls that die in the tanning bed. Because all he's been doing is filming them, talking about how bad he wants them. He's just a sleazy horn dog. He's videotaping them during the roller coaster. And he's like, show me your tits, ladies! They smack the camera out of his hand. The camera falls, wraps around the track. And that's what initially... Sets off the catastrophe mm-hmm. that is, you know, like a, the, the multiple deaths all, all like, across the entire track of this roller coaster, right? Oh, the whole coaster dies. Yeah. He's not on the roller coaster when everybody dies, which means his camera wasn't there and it didn't get wrapped around the track. <laughs> oh, fuck. So whether or not they're on the roller coaster, they were doomed. Wow. Yeah. I don't think that's necessarily a plot hole. I think that's what they're trying to say is that no matter what, even if you- Change something small. Yeah, you change something small, it's still going to happen. That was a very cheeky find. A Frankie cheeky find. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, we do need to talk a little bit more about the tanning death kill. Hell yeah, we do. It is the entire fucking reason we're talking about this movie. It's so good. It is the best kill in Final Destination, in all of them. Hmm. I, I'm i putting it down. I think it's the best kill. Well, we're not here to talk about the whole franchise. We are just here to talk about this movie in particular. So yeah, I'll okay, agree so with you. Best kill of this movie. It's the best kill of the movie. Double kill in this movie. And it is so fucking cruel. Exclamation point. On the th- the music choice because it's so fucking fun. Roller coaster of love, right? <sighs> they survived the death on a roller coaster, and that's the song they died to. You know, I was a little bit uncomfortable watching it this time, and I've seen this movie so many times. I've never gotten uncomfortable in that scene. I think I'm getting soft in my old age, but uh, you're getting more claustrophobic in your old age. I well, I ugh, I would never go in a tanning bed one because that's just not my my thing. Two, uh, because of all those cancer things I read in our last episode. <laughs> sure, and three. Because this fucking movie <laughs> and claustrophobia. Oh man, what a what a cruel death these are. Because I will say most of them are kind of swift. Like people definitely know they're about to die. Something bad happens, and then boom, they're dead. It's it's very rare that it's drawn out. Yeah, like the drawn out part is the what were you calling it? The rune gol room rune rune Goldberg. Yeah, the rune girl. Go- <laughs> the domino effect. I'm gonna keep yeah, saying. Yeah, that, yeah, that's fine. Of the catastrophe in motion in the space. It has nothing to do with the actual person. They're just lining up to, you know, like the mark where mm-hmm. something falls and smashes into them or shoots them in the face. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this one, they're trapped in burning alive. Yeah. At, at least it amps up so fast that they actually catch on fire because otherwise just getting cooked alive oh, sounds even worse. The fucking skin bubbling. <laughs> I, I oh, You could tell they were getting crispy. Like you could see them getting crispy. Yeah, they're just boiling and shit. Oh. Man, it is gnarly. 
even just the fucking squeezy tube closing the the salon owner uses uh, like a bottle of suntan lotion to keep the door open because he goes outside for a phone call slash smoke and the tube is slowly emptying and the door is closing and locking on itself which causes him to not be able to rescue them but just the film lingering on that fucking squeezy tube like slowly oozing out you're just like fuck me this is sinister it's good stuff the the absolute gem of that whole scene though is the overhead shot of the two of them oh so good cooking in the tanning beds and then hard cut to two caskets at the funeral oh and the exact same view it's so fucking perfect Amazing. That is chef's kiss horror right there. Pure cinema, baby. I applauded in my living room. I was just like, oh, just (laughs) just a joy. James Wong, (laughs) you've done it again. You son of a bitch. (laughs) It is so good. So good. And it brings you into the iconic single. Contractually obligated funeral. Yeah. (laughs) For a slasher movie. Yeah. Final Destination is the most guilty of that. The single memorial or funeral yeah we didn't even get it for for everybody that died at the at the amusement park we just cut to uh, a section in the high school where there's a memorial set up just some candles and a creepy wind that blows one of them out <laughs> i love death's creepy wind he'll just say hey fuck your candle <laughs> he's just like something's in motion and the main premonitioner is just like something's in motion Last great thing about the tanning bed dev is when the two girls invite Wendy, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead's character, just because she looks down and they're just like, hey, if you want to come. She's standing in the rain. Yeah, she's standing in the rain like a fucking like wet dog. (laughs) It's like, hey, if you want to come. And five minutes, but like five feet away is clearly a canopy. Everybody else is under it, sitting on picnic tables, dry as day. Yeah. But it's it's when they walk away and you hear them go, that was really nice of us. <laughs> That's it, great. It was nice of them. They weren't doing it to be catty at all. No, but it's just funny. I will say that I like these characters so much because there's no initial asshole. Oh, no. Even the goth kid, Who they kind of try and paint as an asshole at some but, point. So he goes, he goes a little off the rails once his girlfriend dies, but... He's just a smart ass. He's just a teenager. Mm-hmm. When he's the kind of most surprising at the funeral because he has an outburst which you're like, "Oh, this asshole." But he's so It's an outburst we've all had. It's at an 18. emotional outburst. Like he's affected by these two popular kids' death who I'm sure they had nothing in common. They never spoke. Yeah. But he's affected by it, emotionally affected by it. And you're like, wow, this is well written. Even like the jock, like he's he kind of brushes off Wendy and Kevin when they go to tell him, uh, yo, watch out for those two swords above your head. <laughs> Why are they so sharp? And Yeah. <laughs> uh, Why couldn't they just be decorative? But he's, he's like, um, no, thank you. I don't believe this nonsense. But he's like, I know your friends just died and you're going through a lot right now. Like he even has a level of understanding. Whereas... I feel in the most archetypal way, they would have just been like, no, nah, fuck you. I'm going to get my head smushed. Which is actually kind of what he's like. Uh, and he does get his head squished. It's pretty great. His death is really good, too. Yeah. Dude. Because that just the fucking gym sequence is so tense because Wendy's just looking around at all the potential things that can fuck him yeah, up. Yeah, somebody's plugging in a fucking radio by like a pool of water. <laughs> <laughs> and almost drops it. <laughs> There's a fucking bear. Somebody's just like punching and it's wobbling. You're like, yeah, that's going to fall down. <laughs> well, the, and it's part of the Rune Goldberg machine of the gym. It's just like somebody hits the bear. The fingernail flies off the bear, hits a guy in the face who drops his weights, who scares this, who does that, which which cuts the cord and smushes this fucking guy's head. It's great. Do you remember the DVD? I do remember the DVD. And how you could like choose how people die or whether they die here or there. They I, always ended up dying the same way. I remember it being like tiny things change. Like yeah. you're like, no, sit here on the roller coaster. And it's like, joke's on you. We're figuring out how they can still sit in the same spot. Yeah, they We're just, not filming this whole movie again. No, no. It's like a, just a bunch of insert shots that just like misdirect you into thinking that you can affect things. Yeah, it worked out the first time you watched it because you're like, wow, I made the movie. And then the second time you're like, oh, this is the same movie. This is the exact same movie. I loved it, though. <laughs> I, 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 for a while, it was the only way that I would watch it. <laughs> Netflix definitely got their interactive content idea. Oh, my God. That's a good point. From this fucking movie. And maybe Netflix should buy Final Destination and all future Final Destinations should be like Bandersnatch. I would love that. Right? I mean, realistically, if we get another Final Destination movie, it's probably going to be on... Some streaming platform. Which sucks because, honestly, the theater experience was made for these fucking movies. These are so fun to watch with people. Yeah. Not going to happen, though. 
a hundred percent. Six sixth entry in a franchise. Nope. It's going straight to HBO Max. Man, so fucking good though. I agree. What do you think of the subway ending? Obviously, one, two, skip a few, three people survive. Okay, well, first off, <laughs> love that Home Depot death. Like, fucking yeah. girl gets, like, slammed in the back of the head with a bunch of, like, with a nail gun. And it's fucking long. Oh, I don't oh. I don't like that, how she's, like, still alive. And oh, she's and she, just, like, like, squeaks. She's like, what? Uh, like, uh. Didn't like that. Didn't like that. There's a few moments. Even when Ian McKinley dies, his, like, uh, that was his girlfriend at Home Depot, when he dies later on at the 4th of July celebration, uh, when he gets smushed, he's still kind of alive. Like, three quarters of his body's gone. He's just like, squirm, 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 I will squirm. say my only complaint about this movie is that I don't feel like Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Wendy's character, appropriately skipped death. She no, dodged, that's all bullshit. She dodged a firework, and you're like, was that it? You're like, we skipped or death. Or I guess because he died that... He couldn't kill her. I don't. Yeah, see, it's it's so fucking loose. It doesn't make any sense. Even when they're in the subway, and it's just like, no, we talked about this a thousand times. You triggered death, so it skipped you, so we're safe. You're like, no, that still doesn't add up. A hundred percent, this does not add up. And then she has the vision again, and we it shows to the photo and her blurry in the subway car, and you're like, oh, the photo was alluding to this death, but that doesn't make sense because. Ian McKinley died before her after he was already skipped. So therefore, she would have had to skip twice to get to this. Like, the pattern does not line up. No, don't like it. But <laughs> uh, all of the subway ads, like, referencing oh, all of the people that have died. Loved it. So good. Loved it. I read somewhere that the directors initially wanted to have the survivors of the fir- of the second movie. Oh, yeah. The cop and the lead. They're in the subway as well. Be on the subway, mm. like, completely unrelated. They're like, no, nah, we're saving that for part five. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Apparently, too, there was an alternate ending when they first screened the film. I do not know what it was. Uh Uh-oh. But when they first screened the film uh, for test audiences, they hated it. And so the subway was a reshoot. Hmm. Which I'm very interested to know. Um, There were alternate endings on the DVD. Um, One of them, they survived kind of the 4th of July centennial thing. And she drops the phone in like a garbage can. Mm Mm-hmm. Another one, they all survive the roller coaster. Like, she wakes up again in that scenario. Oh, wow. And everybody gets off, and it's just like, never happened. Maybe that was the ending. That had to be the ending people didn't like. Yeah. And you're like, no, fuck that. Fuck it, kill them. <laughs> we, want, we want blood. <laughs> the, the subway sequence is good. I like it. The, where the, I mean, I love it when, like, a big piece of debris comes through a window and just turns a person into, like, dust. Like, her fucking sister just becomes a bucket of blood. Just smit, like, explodes when this thing hits her. And then, fucking Kevin, the train is sliding along the ground, and the window that he's on breaks, and he sort of, like, gets scraped through and pummeled up. That's gnarly. It's also kind of terrifying to think, too, that Death is so angered and wants to kill these people so bad, he's willing to kill a whole subway worth of people to get these three people. Unless he put them on a subway that was supposed to derail anyways. There's so many possibilities, but yeah, yeah a lot of people fucking die on this subway for these lead characters to die. Yeah, I, I love a double premonition, like a premonition at the end. Well, because it's a loop within a loop. Like, now they're in a, a skip death loop inside of a skip death loop. It's fucking good. It's also so cruel of death to give her... I'm going to assume death is the person that gives it these premonitions. Because, again, we're relying on the idea that he's bored. And he's just like, <laughs> I need a challenge. Death is just fucking with you. Yeah, like, he gives her the premonition at a point where she can't escape like hey the train's already moving like it, if she had a, like woken up just as the doors were closing that would have at least there would have been like a hint that maybe she should have she could have gotten out but no there's absolutely zero escape here yeah i think it's so fucking amazing this one is really gnarly too um may, it, maybe it is true that i am i am just getting very soft but the the deaths fucking affected me i guess when i was a kid i was just like ha ha, ha these fucking teenagers are eating it and you don't <laughs> like watch the those moments after, you know, they've been impaled or shot in the face and they're still alive a little bit. And you're like, Ugh. yeah, it's it was it was uncomfortable. But like, I, don't, I don't know if you remember when we watched Final Destination earlier, like late last year. Our big thing was just like those poor parents, like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, their children are dead. Oh, no. <laughs> So yeah, you're aging out a little bit. We got to get back to that high school cynical. Fuck these people. They're not. They're not real. They're not real. 
<laughs> so we gotta we gotta try and tap back into that that uh, that bleak worldview where we don't <laughs> care about anything. <laughs> you're too emotional now. You're just like, oh, those poor fictional characters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the idea of sadness. <laughs> Okay, Hello, Kim. sadness, my old oh, friend. Boy. So, uh, Kim. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Okay, sorry. Just want to shout out to There's Someone Walking Behind You. I will never not love that song. Yeah, great choice. Oh, you could put it in every single horror movie. It is as good as Blue Oyster Cults, Don't Fear the Reaper. Uh, just, I love. They haven't put Don't Fear the Reaper in here anywhere, have they? Like in any of these movies? Two on the nose? Oh. I think we're. It's they tw- have to have. It's 2022. At least baby. in a credit Get on, sequence. Go on the nose. Oh. Put it in. Yeah, it's in every other franchise. You're probably right. It's probably in the credits. It's got to be. It's got to be at least like opening credits, closing credits. Mm-hmm. So you've already established this is your favorite film of the franchise. T- tied with number one. Tied with number one. Favorite of the franchise. Kim, what's your rating of Final Destination 3? Four out of four. Four out of four. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it is perfect. Perfect. A hundred percent on Rotten Tomato. Yeah, that's that's the rating I read earlier. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give Final Destination three. So what are you looking at? You have no notes. Sorry, I thought my phone was vibrating. I thought I was getting a phone call. Like, I think I have to bail out on this. It's uh, bye. Death <laughs> warning you to give it a good rating. Ah, I do like this movie. I'm gonna give it a three out of four. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What are you talking about? Most of the world wow. thinks it's a one. <laughs> Wow. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's really good. It's not my favorite of the franchise. It's a lot higher on my franchise ranking than most people put it. Everybody puts this one at the bottom. No, they don't. I think they do. No, this is like- Oh, no, sorry. They they put Final Destination 5? Is that the one that they put at the bottom? The one where everybody dies at like the NASCAR event? I like that one. I think that one's good. Is that the first one that's like, it's 3D and all the wheels like- hit the screen I think you're right yeah and Buddy dies in like the bottom of the pool like he gets his butt stuck on like the (laughs) suction (laughs) and it's like sucks out his intestines a fear we all have yeah that fucking girl who dies in the car wash we're gonna do that movie we're definitely gonna do it we're definitely gonna do that movie at some point yeah I'm giving this a 3 out of 4 I think it's really good I think it's really fun but I don't think it's a perfect movie I just disagree with you that's fine It's perfect. Let us know what you thought of Final Destination 3. Is it a perfect movie? Yes. Sound off on Twitter (laughs) at NOFS Podcast or the Nightmare on Film Street Discord uh, at nofspodcast.com slash discord. We also have the Nightmare on Film Street community now uh, on Twitter because every social media platform has to have every feature that every other fucking social media platform (laughs) has. No sarcasm there. (laughs) If you're looking, if if you're just itching to get rid of all your spare time by spending it on social media hit us up in the nightmare on film street community (laughs) until next time i'm kim i'm john stay Stay creepy creepy. and final destination 3 is a perfect film it appears you made it out alive but we'll get you next time Help us to grow the horde. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you subscribe. More terror can be found lurking on our website, nofspodcast.com. Until next time, stay creepy, fiends.